vast array of people, given the demographics of our local community, that just can't have access to private law firms and legal assistance. So their only avenue is through the community legal centres. We see it as part of our professional obligation. We are gatekeepers to the legal system. It's an access to justice system. It can't be limited by people being able to afford that access to justice. It's so important because some of those things that our solicitors have done with pro bono assistance, we would never have been able to do that for our clients. It's about every day, all day, ordinary people getting access to a fair trial. There's been Indigenous issues, um, employment issues. There's a very, you know, spread vast range of issues that we've uh, been fortunate enough to have pro bono assistance. I remember being told years ago that what you have to have to get good pro bono assistance for your clients is a relationship. And I rolled my eyes thinking that was just nonsense. It's actually absolutely true. Start with a conversation, keep the conversation open, even if the first response is no, just keep exploring what you might be able to get for your clients. I think though if you're going to make a real commitment to supporting CLCs in regional and remote areas, as a pro bono law firm we have to make the commitment to go and visit them and invest time and money in building those relationships. Phone is a very useful mechanism for being able to talk to people and maintain the relationship, but some of it is just about getting there. It's not all going to happen using technology. It has to be face-to-face -face personal contact. It's really important to make sure that you really understand the communities you're working with and build long-term, deep and trusting relationships. And really face-to-face -face contact is the only way that you really can get that right. The Central Coast CLC does a lot of um, work with uh, Gilbert and Tobin and um, Ashurst around um, Aboriginal Wills Days, which is really successful in our, our area, given such a large population of Aboriginal people. Because you're there for two days, you do mm. start to build that relationship with the lawyers in the community legal sector. You build the relationship with the organisation that's hosting the clinic. You show that the promise of pro bono services is not a pipe dream, there, is, there are actually practical services to be provided. You start to understand a little bit about the community. Working with some of those, you know, bigger firms, um, they're usually really, really good at taking on, you know, local advice. Um, so we've had to sort of, you know, give them some, um, some tips around, you know, working with our community as well. We've found that it's absolutely essential that the lawyers and partners involved in particular projects have appropriate cultural capacity training. We will always work sort of collaboratively to identify what the needs are, what the appropriate program is. There's no one size fits all training program to help people understand the needs of different communities. Uh, so I'm a pro bono partner at Ashurst. Our focus areas in Australia are our Indigenous clients, rural, regional and remote communities and uh, clients who have cognitive impairment or mental illness or their carers. I'm also here on this bush trip this week uh, to see the firsthand the work of Naja. We have a long-term relationship with Naja and we send up secondees on a rolling basis every six months. I'm a place in the civil team so I've got my own caseload. I sort of take on the files from the previous secondee. Pretty much everything that's not criminal law um, is our responsibility. It's a fantastic professional development opportunity for pro bono lawyers to get their seats into CLCs and actually see and do what is actually happening on the ground here. They love seeing the range of work that we do and the way in which we're doing it. They're upskilling themselves in areas of law that they would not otherwise touch. We know that, that law firms don't want to transgress the space which is traditionally legal aid funded. However, we do find that there are some law firms who are actually really trying to play with that a little bit. We really like to support CLCs both in the organisational support, so helping them with corporate governance issues, might be reviewing their employment um, policies, might be helping them draft consent forms for them to use with their own clients. But I think what I've seen is that our lawyers actually get the most out of the pro bono access to justice work where they're providing direct legal advice to the clients at the CLC. 
And I think to have a successful relationship with the CLC, you do a bit of both. When it comes to pro bono work, we obviously can work with organisations in the areas of our regular um, commercial expertise. But over the years of doing a, a lot of pro bono work in particular spheres, we've also become expert in some areas of pro bono work as well. We've done a lot of asylum seeker work. We'd consider ourselves to have some poverty law expertise. I've got a particular bias in ensuring helping people who have disabilities, but I also are very fiercely strong on women's rights and so I will act for women in a sexual harassment matter for free without question. For the last 20 years, RMB Lawyers has had a relationship with Illawarra Legal Centre. We have a rotating roster within our firm so that different solicitors attend each week. There's nobody that doesn't participate and everyone has their designated day to attend. A really useful example happened recently when our community development project seeing his credit change was recording single and we thought uh, okay well we don't know very much about copyright or intellectual property so we obtained a referral through QPilch. One of the key non-legal assistance that pro bono providers have given us is the design of our annual report and that has been absolutely worth its weight in gold. You don't really embark on a relationship or a partnership or a collaboration. You embark on a piece of work together. And if that goes well, then there might be the opportunity to do the next thing and then gradually there'll be the next thing and the next thing. And you turn around a year later and you say, oh, we have a partnership. Look, I've got no issue with a community legal centre asking for money or a secondment, but my preference is to start with something small and then grow it into something larger. The relationship we have with AGS that provides this credit and debt legal service started off with a conversation over a meal here in Darwin. Yeah, so we've uh, had a relationship with Clayton Yates for about 12 years. Uh, it actually started from a meet and greet session that was held in a national conference. Pick up the phone. Exactly. It's not a, a formal process. Most law firms with pro bono practices have someone that is the central contact point, so find out who that is and call. It's just about getting it going and start small and then you can move into who knows what else after that. Pro bono practices work very collegiately. Our aim is to assist people who are marginalised and disadvantaged get access to justice. And I would encourage centres to have relationships with more than one pro bono practice because we can't always meet all of your needs and you get a broader scope to be able to place matters. But if you're going to approach a few of us at the same time, just let us know. There are a lot of strong direct relationships between community legal centres and pro bono law firms, but um, community legal centres that may not have a direct relationship, they can tap into Justice Connect's referral pathways to access a range of our member firms' services. With development of um, pro bono services, including QPilch, we have access to a whole heap of really talented, really experienced counsel across the state uh, and member law firms as well. So the bar has uh, a website that has Find a Barrister on it. So you can search very easily a barrister by their seniority, by their gender, but also more importantly, their area of practice. There's a need for um, assistance to asylum seekers in the Hunter. And so I wrote to the Law Society and to the local bar association and we have over 20 uh, solicitors and five or six barristers who have all put their hand up to, to do pro bono work. We treat any pro bono client in exactly the same way as we treat our commercial clients. So that means that they have access to a partner and they'll have access to a number of lawyers who will be supervised by that partner and when providing the advice. Because a matter's pro bono it doesn't mean that it's second class or second rate. If you're going to take on a pro bono matter as counsel, you have to run that matter as you would run any of your fee paying matters. At the Illawarra Legal Centre, we've been able to keep in touch with one or two firms and that happens on a fairly regular basis because we are able to just call them up and ask them things. Um, but with other firms, time passes and the connection's not there and I might lose track of who the pro bono coordinator is or they might lose track of where we are and what we're doing. 
what I try and do is make sure that there are a number of people within DLA Piper that have a relationship with a number of people within the community legal centre so that if someone leaves, that relationship can continue beyond that. The key to good relationships is flexibility and we're both in high demand, we're both really busy, um, but you know, working together in, in that sort of flexibility in, in doing some of these projects um, goes a long way. Um, and, and it is a relationship, it's not just access to something, it's about a continuing and ongoing relationship and like most relationships, you have some up days and some not so up days, but the strength of the relationship has been proved in the, the, the types of um, support they've been providing to us. My advice to community legal centres if they're trying to leverage some pro bono support is to really invest in that relationship. It really is about um, finding one of your champions within the law firm and, and being persistent and also being patient. And keep the conversation open. If the first response is no, we can't do that, Explore what other options might work for you and your clients. Talk to other community legal centres about who they have a relationship with. I'm quite happy to just hit someone up that I don't know at a webinar and ask them for help if that's what I think is going to be, you know, in the best interest of the centre and its clients. Talk to the pro bono centre. They know um, what sort of specialty some organisations or some pro bono practices have and who works in what regions. Look, if you're a lawyer or someone else in a CLC, particularly a triple R CLC, and you haven't prepared an application for pro bono assistance for a client's benefit, and what's wrong with you? I mean, like, so, yeah. <laughs> always keep it in mind because when you've got the sort of resources of a member firm to bear, um, that's really sensible use of your own resources as a CLC.